In Google Sheets, a lot of people will select some cells and then manually recolor them using something like this. They might do that for headers or for values, depending on criteria, but both of those methods are bad because if something changes, they don't change dynamically. Whereas here, if I add in a new column or a new row, it will bring across the formatting automatically. That's because I'm using a special feature. And over here, for example, if this changes from yes to no, then everything that's no is automatically going to be red. If this says 100,000, that's automatically going to change color to orange. So these kind of features are ones that you should use instead of manually recoloring it with these two. So my name is David and I have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. I love talking about the new stuff and I love talking about underused features like these two that I'm going to show you here. So uh, let's build one of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to copy it. Then we're going to go say here and I'm going to paste it. Control V and I'm actually going to get rid of the formatting. So uh, another underused feature is in the format pane, you have clear formatting. Also, this is the shortcut, Control and backslash, which is great. You can't do that with Excel. And also clear formatting in Google Sheets keeps your number formatting like your dates and your comma styles, which is also really good because you very rarely want to change those from my experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this table Control A will select just this. I'm going to go to the Format tab and I'm going to choose this thing called Alternating Colors. Conditional formatting we're covering later in this video. So click on that. It opens up this sidebar. I can change the color and I can make it not apply to headers. Usually I would apply to headers and I can use footers. We'll see that in a second. Or I can change the style as well. So let's say I want this to be absolutely anything that I want like that. It's a little bit ugly, but this might be what you want. And these are some custom styles that you can use and have there. So I'm going to choose, say, this one. Uh, by the way, if you don't want this alternating of dark light, dark light, you can just change color to to be white, and then they're both white. If all you want is the footers and the headers, for example. But I'm going to keep it like that. I'm quite satisfied there. And then I press done. And then if I add in a new column on the right hand side, it grows. If I add in a new number here, and keep going, then that will also grow with alternating colors. And for example, if I want to edit it, then, or let's say we want to add in a total. So I'm going to say, you know, here, total, then I'm going to go to format and alternating colors again. And I'm going to tick on footer, and this is a differently colored footer. But again, I can change this to absolutely anything that I want. And then here, it might make sense if I have, for example, a sum, it should pick it up automatically like that. Google Sheets is pretty smart like that. And then you get this appearing that way. But you could change it. And if I add in a new row underneath where you've got the footer in that thing, it will automatically expand and move the footer. So a couple of nuances about it. Um, I often get confused with the ranges here. So sometimes I'm thinking, okay, cool, done. And then I want to create this one. So I go to format and then alternating colors. It will create it in that one. But then I, I'm, I'm kind of clicking somewhere and I expect it to do changes to the one I'm clicking on. But it doesn't. It still does changes to the original one. So keep an eye on this. It does get confusing like that sometimes. If you want to remove it, you need to do this. This will remove it from the gray one. And yeah, that will remove it from the gray one. It keeps the formatting the way it was before. Uh, if you were to select this and press the delete button, it will not remove the alternating formats. You need to go to format and then alternating colors and then remove or clear formatting will work as well. If you import between Google Sheets and Excel, then it does convert them from tables into alternating formats, which is not exactly the same feature. So it can be a bit confusing like that. And it also often crashes when I download an, a Google Sheets file into an Excel file like this, then it sometimes will not load up the tables properly. So just a couple of things to bear in mind there. So I'm going to copy all of this, control C and paste it here. And I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to go to format and clear formatting. I'm going to get this to be greater than a certain number is going to be in a color and it's going to be changing color based on what's in it. So super, super useful. If you select your data, you can go to the format tab and choose conditional formatting. And here you get the side pane and you can say that I want this to be a format if any of these features. The default is if is not empty, which is a really stupid one because most of the time that's the case. So change it away from the default because it's easy to 
make mistakes and forget that. So if you say greater than or equal to, and then you can write 30,000 in here, and you can change the color to be one of these default three ones, or you can just change to anything you want. So I'm gonna choose the orange one, which is gonna be like this one, and then press okay when you're done. And then here we're gonna do it with text. Text is probably the most common one I use it for. So I'm going to say add a rule, and you can do it without going back and forth, which is nicer than alternating formats. And then is not empty? Nope, I want text that contains, and I can say no is going to be red. And then immediately you can say add another rule, and it's already got this in this preset, which is great. So I can do partial, and this is going to be yellow, add another rule, and then yes is going to be green. So super quick to do that, much quicker than with Excel if you want to add multiple rules to the same cells. When you've got dates, so I'm going to do add another rule, and you can just manipulate it from here as well. And I'm going to say date is after. And after 2022, I'm going to say exact date and first or 31st of December 2021. Anything after that is going to be in blue. So I'm going to just choose a blue color. It might not be exactly the same as the one I have above, but that's going to be there. Now, if you have something like this, where in the purple one, I just had purple for some things that are outsourced, don't bother doing that. Instead, just have another column that says outsourced. And then I'm going to have checkboxes, which I really like doing. So insert and then checkbox. I have another video where I talk about data validation, especially how it just got released. And you can have it like that. And what I can do here is I can select it and add another rule. And I can say, you have so many here. So these are all text, is empty, is not empty. Uh, starts with, ends with, is exactly. The date ones uh, are kind of not as well pronounced in Excel and all of these number ones. And you get custom formula that we'll look at in a little bit as well. So text is exactly, and I'm going to say true because that is how checkboxes are, the trues and falses, unless you customize them. Uh, but you can also do other things. So for example, here, uh, if I click on there, then I have these three rules. And this is text that contains. So if I say not yet, this will still be read. But if I misspell something, it will not work. So what I can do is I can select all of this, and I can go to add another rule. And I can see the first yes is in Q7. So I'm going to say every time that it says yes, the whole row is going to be in purple. So I'm going to say custom formula is, and I'm going to say equals Q7 equals yes, always in speech marks when you're referring to text in a formula. As you can see, it's covering it uh, in certain things, but I want it to apply to the whole row. So I need to put a dollar sign in front of Q because Q is going to be locked and there it's going to be showing me for the whole row in green, but I'm going to change that to purple. I'm going to say done, but when I'm back here, I'm actually going to reprioritize this to be the top one. And now this is going to be the first one that looks at for priority. So if you want, you can reprioritize them however you want, and then it will rearrange the priority. To remove them, you can remove them one by one, or you can select it and go to clear formatting like we saw earlier with the tables. Now, the other one that I'm going to show you, and this is super, super cool, is if you've got just numbers like this and you just want to very quickly know what the high numbers are and the low numbers, you can press add another rule and I can go to color scales and this will show me white is the highest, green is the lowest. Or I can change this to, for example, this one, which is green is the highest and green is the lowest and reds are the highest. And it can really, really help me or you can change them as you wish. So for example, it could be lowest. This one is going to be, say, red and this one's going to be uh, a pinkish color like that. So they can show you however you want to do it. And you can have whether this is a custom number as well. So this is color scales. I use these quite a lot for this kind of scenario where I just want a quick view of what the highest and the lowest is. Uh, great. So if you like this video, then I have tons more videos on Google Sheets, Excel, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. I love talking about the new stuff and I love talking about the really new features. So give this video a like if, if you learned something today. Thanks for watching.